Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid. I actually had already taken my the cylinder head and the block to the machine shop and they called me up and they said this block is junk. It's got cracks on it and it needs to be replaced. And I want to show you these cracks up close so that you guys know what to look for because this is something I could have checked for before I even took this thing to the machine shop and if I uh, had had a little more experience with this, I would have noticed these cracks right away. So anyway, let me show you. Okay, so that's uh, the number two cylinder. This is the exhaust side that you're looking at. Uh, and you can see he's outlined in Sharpie what appears to be a crack. Now, if, if I'm being honest, when he pointed this out once I got there, I recognized this immediately. I remember seeing this, but I thought it was just sort of like a like a scratch on the surface of the cylinder head. I thought it would clean up when they resurfaced it. It just didn't click in my head that this was a crack. But yeah, indeed, that is a crack. And let me see if we can illuminate it this way. Yeah. Um, he sees what is the beginning of a crack in there. You know, he wasn't sure. There's definitely a crack in here. Let me see if I can point it out. It's actually on the inside right surface right there. I think we can definitely see that. It's like the beginnings of a crack. It hasn't moved all the way to the surface yet, but he could definitely see it. And now that it's pointed out to me, I could see it too. There's also a little one in there. And there's definitely one in there. And there as well. Over here, again, questionable. And yeah, so those are... Uh, those are the most common areas where these heads crack apparently between the coolant outlet um, and the exhaust seat. One other piece of information I want to share with you, um, before I went to the machine shop, one of my viewers actually got me on Facebook and we were talking about cylinder heads and he had told me that he had heard that these cylinder heads were produced with a natural warp to them, um, just, you know, straight from the factory. And I'd never heard of or read about that. It was actually kind of interesting to hear that. And um, I, you know, I thought that he must have been mistaken at first. He told me that he also called a BMW dealer and they told him the same thing. Um, he told him, he, he originally learned this from his machinist, by the way. Um, I should have believed it right there, uh, but I didn't. It just didn't sound quite right to me because when you machine metal, you know, the, the way it's machined, like on a milling machine, it's machined flat. It's machined flat and straight. So I've never heard of something that is machined being machined with, with a curve in it. It's just kind of, it doesn't really happen that way, I guess, unless you have uh, a multi-axis milling machine and stuff. But uh, apparently what this actually is... Well, the guy, the, the guy I was talking to when he was telling me that he heard that they're naturally warped, he thought that, uh, that they were warped this way as well from the factory. And that's why it wasn't really making that much sense to me. And then I thought about it after my machinist told me the same thing. Uh, I thought about it and I realized that what he probably meant was that they're warped this way from the factory. Uh, such that they would press down more in the center to counteract that natural warp that happens to them over time. Um, and that is the case. That, you know, when I, when I saw the machinist again and I dropped off the new cylinder head that I got for him and picked this one up, I talked about it with him again and he confirmed, yeah, they're naturally warped this way from the factory. Um, I suspect it's not natural. I suspect they're doing it on purpose and they're probably just, um, what they're probably doing is they're turning it over this way after they mill it. And they are, uh, and I think they're just kind of, you know, they're, they're shimming it up on this end and they're shimming it up on this end. And then they're sort of bolting it down in the center and they're heating it up in an oven. And basically, you know, the center is being pressed down. It's, it's being forced like this. And when you heat it up in an oven, that's going to, you know, make the, the metal relax a little bit and it'll sort of conform to that bend. And then when you let it cool down very slowly and you unbolt it, you're now going to have a piece of metal that's sort of naturally bent this way. So that's probably, you know, and that's how they, that's how they straighten these, by the way. So if your cylinder head gets a bow like this, they straighten it using the method that I just described. So they're probably over straightening it and, you know, bending it the other way at the factory. And I'm, I'm surmising that's what they do. So yeah, I thought that was a really interesting piece of information that I wanted to pass along to you guys. 
Um, so yeah, when you hear someone talk about how these things have a natural bend from the factory, the bend is like this, and it's the opposite direction from how these things get bent or how these things warp over time. As these things, you know, get pounded by the explosions in the cylinder, this metal gets compressed downward like that and it starts to get a dished sort of wear. So yeah, very interesting. The nice thing about these cylinder heads is that it's the same head on the 323, the 328, the 325 and the 330. It's all the same head, same size valves. The only thing different is the camshaft. And I already have my camshafts from my 330. So if I absolutely needed to, I could have grabbed a 325 cylinder head or a 328 or a 323. And I could have just junked those, those camshafts, but everything's all right. It only cost me about 120 bucks. And hopefully there are no cracks in that one. I looked at it before I bought it and there were no cracks in here or along here as he was describing this one to me. So uh, hopefully there are no internal cracks on that one that we can't see. He's going to do a pressure test on it and figure out if it's okay. Hopefully it passes muster. I think that it will. Anyway, that's it for this video. Um, please like and subscribe. I'm the 50s kid. Thanks a lot for watching.